Hallelujah. The Lord has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome this Easter morning to Born Katamit United Methodist Church online service. We're so happy that you're with us and we'll hope that maybe we'll also see you at um, our early morning service or our 11 um, o'clock service today. So please join with us and sing the songs with as much happiness and fervor as you can because it's another Easter and what a joyful day that is. And also read along with the bold letters. Let us now sing Shalom and greet each other if you're in the house with other people. Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horns. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it, let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity.
Let's be together in the spirit of prayer. Thank you, gracious and holy God, for this good day. Thank you for your victory over death and sin in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, bless us, Lord, this day we pray. Bless us to know the great blessing of your presence, your living presence. Trust in your promises of life, life abundant, life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let your living words of life speak deeply into our hearts and minds and lives. May we receive your living word with thanksgiving. In the spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We pray as he taught us, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces and the disgrace of his people, and he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation.
second reading is from John 19, verses 38 to 42. After this, Joseph of Aramiah, who was a disciple of Jesus, though secretly for fear of the religious authorities, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing mixtures of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 75 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths, according to the burial customs of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden was a tomb, a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of the preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Amen. Let's listen to the word from John chapter 20 now, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to my father and your father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. 
Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She told him that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb early, early in the morning while it is still dark. She sees the large stone that had sealed, the, sealed that tomb rolled away now. And she runs to tell Simon Peter and another disciple. Three times now in succession we hear Mary telling us who she is looking for. She says, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him to Peter and the other disciple. Then as she speaks to a pair of angels in the tomb, she says, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Then again she says, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. As she speaks now with Jesus, not yet recognizing him. Each time that she speaks, we are hearing Mary completely focused on finding the body of Jesus, presumably to be sure that he is finally properly buried. She's probably also trying to sort out all that has happened in this very full traumatic week in which she has seen Jesus, her Lord, her teacher, crucified and dying on the cross. Mary is one of the very few Disciples who did stay with Jesus all the while while he was on that cross. Now she and perhaps some of the other women who were there with her at the cross have come to the tomb. But now Mary alone runs and tells the news of the stone rolled away and the body of Jesus missing to Simon Peter and the other disciple known as the one Jesus loved. And these two now run together to the tomb. When the men look into the tomb and go inside one at a time and see the tomb indeed is empty. And the burial clothing that the body of Jesus had been wrapped in now is rolled up in piles. One of the men, we're told, now begins to believe. Not yet understanding, we're told, but begins to believe. And the two male disciples now go home for the day. And only Mary remains alone, unconsoled, unconsolable, weeping. And I would like to say that I relate most of the time with Mary, who is the one disciple who sticks it out with Jesus all day. But I confess, more often I relate more with Peter and the other disciple. I'm guessing have done some weeping of their own during the two nights and a day since the death of Jesus. Though I'm pretty sure they're doing their best to not be seen weeping in daylight in public. I do imagine they're fully sympathetic with Mary. I bet they offered to walk her home to where she's staying, maybe even remembered to ask if she's feeling okay yet and if she's got enough to eat, etc. But again... Seeing some of myself and Peter and that other disciple, I'm guessing that as they see Jesus' body really is gone, now they can't think of anything else practical for them to be doing. They figure, well, it's time for us to go home. Yes, I try to imagine all Peter and the other disciple must have been thinking of later on that day and through the weeks and days afterwards. I imagine them replaying that week gone by many, many, many times. All the drama of that last supper, Jesus washing their feet and teaching them late into the night, then the religious authorities and the police arresting Jesus out in the garden, taking him first to the residence of the former chief priest and the current chief priest, then to Governor Pilate's mansion. And I'm sure Peter must have kept remembering how he had told Jesus earlier that night, Lord, I'll stay with you through whatever happens. I'll stay with you. Even if I die with you, I'll stay with you. Jesus telling him, Peter, 
You'll be denying me three times this night before the cock crows. All the disciples of Jesus would surely be thinking of him on the cross, each according to their particular circumstances of that week. The mother of Jesus and the disciple Jesus loved could be remembering Jesus telling them, Woman, here is your son. And man, here's your wife. Here's your mother. Here is your mother. Here is your son to them. Those who had fled away from Jesus, which was most of them, they'd be dealing with feelings of guilt for sure. All would be feeling the deep loss of Jesus and wondering who the authorities might come for next, arresting or executing them. I imagine all the disciples are not ready to talk much about all this yet. They've got to be experiencing something pretty close to what we call post-traumatic stress syndrome. They're in the middle of that. And Mary Magdalene has been all through that traumatic week at least as much as anyone else. But as my wife keeps reminding me, women are different, as if I needed reminding. Women have different ways of knowing, and women have different ways of processing things. Maybe, maybe I, as a guy, can blame it all on COVID, but for some reason this year I have been finding myself distracted by details in the story that I can't remember even thinking about before. Like this week, I've been thinking, where did Jesus get these clothes he's wearing when Mary sees him and first thinks he is the gardener? Remember, the soldiers were drawing lots for his clothing last we saw him on the cross. And those cloth wrappings that his body had been wrapped in was left in the tomb, so he wasn't wearing them. Which comes to think of it does sound a little bit like a detail my wife would notice. If it was me in the story, she'd be saying, you're not going to be wearing those clothes to church. Ah. And the other question, maybe a little deeper I've had this year, has been, where has Jesus been since leaving that tomb? Where was he when Peter and the other disciple got to the tomb? How is it only Mary gets to see him? And these might even be good questions, interesting questions at least to think about some other time. But I'm guessing these are probably avoidance questions today for me, questions subliminally designed to distract me from deeper questions, questions that take me into deeper in the heart feelings, the kind of feelings Mary feels. As she weeps and will not be consoled, not be consoled even by angels whom she is speaking with as if she talks with angels every day. Mary can't be distracted by distracting questions like I can, because she knows whose presence she is seeking. She knows nobody but Jesus can console her. This past year of COVID's often felt like one long Lenten time of in, out in the wilderness. One long season of prolonged fasting from friendships and familiar routines. A long period of abstinence from each other's company, except mostly on Zoom and in very small groups for just a little while. A difficult time. That has nevertheless hope, helped us I hope to know more of what Mary Magdalene knows that first Easter morning, as she knows her deep, deep need for Jesus, a need for Jesus far above anyone and everyone and anything else. And if we're not all the way there yet with Mary and knowing our complete need of Jesus, if we're not all the way there, if we're still caught up in the details of losses and questions and anxieties, I don't think we necessarily have to feel especially guilty. It's what I think I'm hearing Jesus saying most to us is that we're all still invited to stay with him in the story, 
Keep learning from Mary Magdalene's example and her focus and persistence as she continues to seek Jesus, even when there seems to be no hope of finding more than his dead body. Still, she keeps seeking. Seeking Jesus, only Jesus. We are still invited to seek with her and learn with Mary, who like us is still learning how much she needs more than the past, how much she needs more than the body of Jesus without life in it, how much she needs the living presence of Jesus. Yes, of course, we all do. And even though Mary doesn't recognize yet, doesn't realize finding Jesus really is alive, possible, Finding Jesus alive is possible. It is. And for all of us, it is. And even though Mary doesn't even know it yet, it's really Jesus that she's talking with while he's standing close by her as she's weeping. Even though she cannot recognize him through all her tears, still, she knows who he is as he speaks her name. As we keep looking for Jesus, keep learning to stay in conversation with him, telling him everything on our hearts, remembering to pause, take deeper, slower breaths, and practice listening to God, speaking or breathing God's spirit in our hearts. Praying and listening is how we come to know Christ's presence again or for the first time. We come to recognize more and more how Jesus has been with us, close by all along, as we too now with Mary call out to him again or for the first time, Teacher, Savior, Lord. And as Mary did, we too share the good news. God is with us. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's take a moment for silent prayer and reflection as we begin our time together in prayer and praise.
Again, Lord God, we thank you so very much for this day of resurrection and new life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord our God. We continue in prayer for all your church everywhere, in earth and in heaven. We pray for our nation, President Biden, the Congress, the judiciary, and all state, local, and town governments. We continue to pray for all the community of nations and peoples, people of faith everywhere in all traditions. Help us, Lord, to do justice, love kindness, and live humbly together in peace according to your law of love, we pray. We continue to pray for the COVID virus to be overcome. We pray for all first responders. We pray for the unemployed, underemployed, and businesses that are suffering and struggling, for all suffering, anxieties, and losses. Now with Easter and the completion of Holy Week, I need to say a special thank you to our video crew who has been working overtime, especially Arnie, Carr, Vicki Horn, Joe Burns too. We're thankful also for Tracy Jekyll and all her crew that have participated in Holy Week prayer vigiling. We continue in prayer for the families of Ginny Wennerstrom, Nancy McKenzie, Shizuko Fuller. Lifting prayers this week for Carol Ann Du Bois, whose mother passed on this Monday in Minnesota. Tell the story about her last goodbyes another time. There's a beautiful story there. We continue in prayers for Dottie and Robbie Cotter, Chris Bean, her family and Emma, Susan DeWitt, Yvonne Beatty, Jim Smith, Julie and Steve, Mary Peterson, Karen Arnold, the family of Skip Burnett, the family of Doris Bloss. We continue in prayers for Wilma and Max, and Wilma's niece Tina, for Fred Bartholomew, Nancy Bowles, her daughter Lee, Rosalie Cole, her nephew Nathan, Donna Frank, David Harrison, Taryn, we pray for our Bishop, Suda Devadar, our District Superintendent, David Calhoun, and all the New England Conference. We continue in prayer for the Bourne Food Pantry, similar food pantries throughout the earth. Our thrift shop, our children's clothing ministries, all the ministries of all your people, Lord. We continue to invite you to let us know your prayer requests and the praises you'd like lifted up. We continue to thank you, Lord God, for all the ways that we see you at work in our lives, in the life of your world, in our communities. In Jesus' strong name, we give you thanks and we pray. Amen. Thank you.
Let's continue to give thanks to God together for everyone who is contributing to the life of our churches as we do continue to face financial struggles and challenges. We appeal to all able to continue to be generous in support of Christ's church. Jesus is dependent on us as we are depending on each other. Thank you, thank you many times over everyone who is able to help in any way. May we all continue to listen to God's Spirit, remembering God's faithfulness unto us always. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and praise. Amen. Please join with me in our prayer of dedication. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Even when we do not recognize you, you recognize us always. You know our hearts. You know our tears. You know our hopes. You know our path. Even when we don't know ourselves, you know us completely. And you offer us your words of grace, your living words that bring new life. 
Oh, help us, Lord, we pray, to know your voice and heed your word and welcome you with gratitude and joy ever more deeply into our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Amen. in peace to love and serve our gracious and holy God, share the good news of Jesus Christ, risen Lord and Savior, all the ways you can, everywhere you can. God will be with you till we meet again. <laughs>